Hi, we're Coco and Tell. Hi, so we're going to talk about anxiety today. Um, that'll be the topic for our discussion today. So Yeah, that's yeah. our topic for today. Um, I think we picked it because we feel like a lot of people can relate to mm -hmm. having anxiety nowadays. Almost everybody yes. suffers from it. Like you just hear it everywhere. Everywhere. Yes. everywhere. And so um, Tell's going to start us off with... Uh, with the topic, yeah, because she's like knows a lot about it, and I just know I feel it, <laughs> and I deal with it. But she can dive deeper into into anxiety. So tell us, you know, from your perspective, like what is anxiety, and then talk about your own experience. Okay, so anxiety. I don't know where to start because there's a lot of things that I could say. Um, basically, anxiety tends to be something where if you've had chronic stress for mm -hmm. a period of time mm -hmm. it can build into anxiety um depending on the situation i mean but there are kids who do have anxiety too depending on their situation well that also stems from stress right so they just they, don't know that it's yeah stress yeah right and so young. anxiety is basically you know you're in a state of uh, dysregulation, you know, your nervous system's dysregulated. And so you have these racing thoughts, the symptoms, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. of racing thoughts and um, what else? Um, panic attacks, um, sweaty. I mean, there's a lot of physical symptoms, right. sweaty hands, uh, you're cold, you're hot. Um, you you think you you think the worst you think you're gonna die right. you know right. the list goes on you right. get headaches um you can't sleep at night so do you think that's different from just general nervousness um well if it's general nervousness nervousness um <laughs> that's different because you could be nervous before giving a speech and then you know that I'm just giving an example. No, no, that, that makes you know, total sense. Um, that makes total And then sense. that nervousness goes away, but anxiety, right. when depending right. on how bad it is, because there's different types of anxiety where you have health anxiety or, you know, anxiety um, due to trauma, right. you know, um, or the type of anxiety, you know, when you have PTSD. It's just, there's different different triggers triggers right you know and so um but anxiety is something what like for people who are really dealing with it where it's uh -huh. chronic so you know that comes on a daily basis you know if you're not doing anything to regulate yourself so i mean for me i'm still i have high anxiety mm -hmm. um that i've been working on till this day and you know it's 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 a huge job mm -hmm. you know to work on it um do you think you had anxiety when you were a kid um yes i did oh yeah because i didn't realize it of course then because i thought oh well my parents were nice and all that but I didn't realize there was certain other events that happened in my childhood, meaning being with abusive babysitters, oh. um, things like that. Yeah. Um, so I didn't realize until now as an adult that I had anxiety in my younger years as a child. Right. You know, right. Um, and that happens for a lot of people too, like where they don't realize they they've had anxiety depending yeah. on the situation. Yeah. What did that look like? Cause I remember you telling me about it before. Um, like, were you afraid to go to the babysitter? Oh yes. Before? Like right yes. before? Cause I you was knew what terrifying. was coming. Yeah. Even if you were like, you were like small, you're like a baby, <laughs> like a toddler. Five. Yeah. Oh no. As a was baby. That was the other no, 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 no. That yeah. The that, oh, sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, yeah, I'm like, to choose what you're going to share. I just assumed we were talking about the same thing. No, I forgot. I outed you. <laughs> no, 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 no. You didn't. You didn't. I forgot. It It happened as I was a baby, so I couldn't remember that because I was a little infant. Okay. Because <laughs> I remember my mom telling me she had yeah. to take me away from the babysitter because they used to pinch me, like, and I have bruises. Yeah. But um, when the, the one that I remember was when I was five. Oh, okay. Yeah. So 
when that happened, I mean, I was, that's, that's the only one I remember. So I was really nervous. I was crying, like just screaming for my mom not to, you know, bring, bring yeah. you down. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And even though that was a short period, but mm-hmm. that I didn't know that was going to affect me for the rest of my life. Right. You know. So then the rest was kind of like adult uh, onset anxiety. Yeah. Yeah. There was, there was, I was in different situations. So as an adult, well, and then with my mom being sick, that which caused me to have health anxiety. Oh yeah. You know, because she died so young um, and seeing what she went through mm-hmm. and I never processed that cause I was in survival mode, you yeah. know, being in the hospitals. That's why I don't like going to the hospitals. Yeah, I know. And then I have a thing about doctors yeah, you um, do. I have to like interject though, because I know that like when when my aunt's husband was passing away, you came to the hospital and he passed away from the same thing your mom passed away from. And I know that was hard for yes. you to be there because it brought all of that emotion mm-hmm. back of um Yeah. You know, just trauma. the fear, the trauma, the yes. anxiety. But you you came and you stayed and mm-hmm. you sat through that discomfort that you were feeling. Yeah. You know, like you looked at it head on, you know, to be there for me and my yeah. family. So I just have to give you credit for that because oh. that's <laughs> that is not easy. Well, that <laughs> was the did, But that's okay. part of you staring it in the face mm-hmm. and dealing with it and processing it and allowing yourself to like move through it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Because the situation was like almost exactly the yes. same. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was. Um, the only thing that I had in my mind was to be there for you guys. That was it. Yeah. You know, I just try to block everything else out. But um, yeah, it's hard for me to be at the hospital. And I, I've had to go to the hospitals, especially like when um, one of my friends had passed away a couple of years back and having to see her go through what she went through, you know, um, that was not easy to watch. Um, but growing up in the hospital, (laughs) seeing my mom sick all the time, that created a lot of anxiety towards health for me yeah because you saw her probably getting poked and prodded and tested yes. and all this and all that and in pain but she's trying to hide it because she doesn't want to scare she you couldn't. she couldn't hide it no there was times where she couldn't hide it she couldn't hide the pain and i uh-huh. saw her screaming you uh-huh. know like everything i saw everything you know um so all of that just um yeah that stays with you yeah it, it stays yeah, with you and that's what i'm working on right now um trying to heal from that and um yeah and then also the other you know anxiety like you know with ptsd you know i have certain triggers i can't handle too much stimulation like loud noises the wind it's weird it sounds weird no it's okay Um, it could be anything it could be like a banana like you have no idea the wind scares me like i used to not be afraid of wind but um I, I, every time it's windy or like things like if I know a door's going to slam, I'm just like, you know, yeah. I can't handle yeah. that. Um, no, I feel like these are important things to hear because I think a lot of people don't realize that anxiety has a root. Mm-hmm. Like it came from somewhere. Right. You don't just feel anxious just because. Mm-hmm. I, but a lot of people don't dig deep and try to think about where is this anxiety coming from? They're just, they just automatically go to what can I take to make this feeling go away? Mm-hmm. Exactly. Right. They're going to try and it. Mm-hmm. medicate it yeah. or cover it with drugs or, right. or distraction. Mm-hmm. Be- but so I feel like all these things that you're saying, like the wind or yeah. you know, the health scares yeah. and the, the this and the that it's important to acknowledge that, the anxiety came from somewhere Mm -hmm. and it's triggered by certain reminders Mm -hmm. of certain events. Right. And that's where the anxiety is coming from. It's not just because, you know, you're a weak person or because, you know, you know, you can't handle things or, Mm -hmm. you know, for whatever people will tell you, Mm -hmm. you know, because people always judge you and tell you, Oh, you just need to toughen up. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. It's like, no, this is coming from yeah. somewhere. Get over the it. The brain is <laughs> is way more complex than people give it credit mm-hmm. for. Right. It's like things get hardwired in there and you don't even know it. Mm-hmm. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, it's it's really complicated, you know, when you're going through it and you f- it makes you feel stuck, you know, Um 
especially like because people get it in different ways you know so some people i used to get insomnia you know um and then those panic attacks mm -hmm. those are just the worst because i always felt like i was going to die because it was just so intense but you know it just comes back to your body trying to release you know it's just trying to release because that that trauma stored up in right. your body so do you think like yes your body's wanting to release but do you also feel like it's trying to tell you something like send you some sort of message yeah like you need to look at this mm -hmm. you need to work on this yeah definitely it is um so it's just like for instance when my panic attacks would come i'm just giving this as an example mm -hmm. so where do you feel it i, I felt it in my chest you know, my, the heart palpitations and just not being able to breathe where I feel like I'm going to pass out. Okay, so I guess my heart center is blocked. So mm -hmm. I'm questioning that at that time. And mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, I need to work on this. What's going on? What am I hurt by? What am I holding in there? Yeah. You know, because you want to feel that sensation where yeah, go to it. Yeah. Like, oh, if this is grief, go to the grief. Right, right. And, and figure out why your heart's broken right exactly yeah. you face it and then you realize oh this is what happened you know and this is what i need to heal from you know my my, my heart has been wounded it's been right. broken right from so and so you know um, so do you feel like um you can attest to the to the process like oh i had anxiety about this and i felt it here and then i went to the root and i addressed it and mm -hmm. now i don't get that specific trigger anymore no i don't i don't have panic attacks anymore awesome yeah that that's gone but of course it took time for that to go away right you right. know it took um a few months of painful work <laughs> That's really good. The fact that you were able to like deep dive and address it within months. Yeah. Because some people, it will take them years, yeah. decades, and, you know. But the work, what got, I'm saying was not just dealing with the emotions, not just clearing out that, that heart space, but also I was changing everything, you know, making sure I was eating a pro Oh, um, Yeah proper i was eating proper and um getting to sleep on time so exercising important. i I'm was doing said that. yoga um meditating you know just making sure that everything was in alignment mm -hmm. every aspect of my life you know my spirituality yeah. my, my um the physical health the yeah. emotional health everything had to be in alignment you were working on it as a whole being right not just like oh let's let me just work on this part with that's affecting my brain and giving mm -hmm. me panic attacks. Mm -hmm. It was like a total whole body experience right. for you. Yeah. Yeah. I think a lot of people just don't realize they need to do that. Yeah. They're like, oh, I'm just going to go to therapy. Let's just say. And that's yes. it. Yeah. But it, that's just not enough. That's yeah. like a, that, that, that helps. It's for sure. It doesn't help because you're able to talk and yeah. the therapist, if the therapist is, you know, good, good. And he or she makes you feel safe, then yes, it, they can open up the door to help you see what you need to work on. But mm -hmm. then, you know, I think one of the healing modalities that really work that people can benefit from if they're having anxiety especially if it's coming from trauma um is somatic therapy you know um that's really good i never got to do that because i couldn't <laughs> afford it but it's it's a beneficial therapy because mm -hmm. that works with your body like can you, you explain know, what that is because i know so, soma means body mm -hmm. but i don't really so know what the rest of it entails you know what they do is i mean i never been to but how it's described is that you know um you know you talk about like whatever trauma that happens they're, they're going to ask you where so where are you feeling it you right know? and right. then it does store in, in yes. the cells of your body in a certain area so they help you to process and release that basically you know and then there's nice. also um emdr that's for people who have extreme anxiety or yeah you know a lot of trauma stored and uh for people for ptsd mm -hmm. um i never got to do that either but that i would recommend um but that's something with the eye movement. yeah when you follow I, the yeah. light mm -hmm. yeah the laser yeah. yeah and i heard that it was good yeah. results yeah 
for people, but it's quite expensive. But if you can't afford it, you believe me, you, you can really have faith. If you have faith and just know, believe that you can heal because we do have the ability yeah. to to heal ourselves. We, we do. It's just there's certain it takes work and there's certain things that we have to change, you know, um, in our lifestyle. Yeah. You know, our environment, people around us, all those things factor in, you know. Right. And um, yeah. I have to agree with the part where you said you have to believe it. Because mm -hmm. I think that's where a lot of people fall short. Yes. Is they don't believe it themselves that they can heal. Mm -hmm. Right. Or they're putting that responsibility of belief on someone else. Right. Right. Like, oh, well, my therapist believes I can heal mm -hmm. or my friend believes I can heal. But you have to believe yes. it in order for that to take root right. in your being. Right. Like right. in your soul, in your mind, in your in every part of yourself. Right. Like that's the seed you have to plant mm -hmm. yeah. within you for it to to become real. Right. Right. And so, yeah, it, and it comes to those you know, positive thoughts, you know, of, cause anxiety can make you, if it's extreme anxiety can bring you to a real low, you know, it's so you exhausting. Spiral, yeah. Spiral you know, just into you're, like, you're tired. You're exhausted from, you know, all that rate, the racing thoughts. Yeah, cause it, it, yeah. It's draining. It's emotionally yeah, it draining. Takes uh, your nervous system takes a huge hit. It does. When your body is experiencing anxiety. Yeah. And then, um, I think that's when people kind of roll into depression. Right. Afterwards. Yes. They, they, they go into that. depression and, you know, um, yeah, when, when I was having that extreme anxiety, I, I was having depression at the same time. So it was just like, you know, you have this, you just feel heavy. So were you like back bouncing back and forth? Mm -hmm. Like anxiety, depression, anxiety, and I think, I think anxiety by day, depression at night. I or? think the, the depression was just always there. Oh, okay. You know, no, that makes the, sense. the anxiety comes, that makes the anxiety is there, but uh, depression is there at the same time because you're just, when you're low on energy, That's true. It, it's depressing. You feel right. depressed. You feel weighed right. down. Right. And, you know, being exhausted mentally, just not having the energy to do anything, you know, um, and then being alone you know like isolating yourself so mm -hmm. just isolating yourself more you know because that's naturally what you feel like you need to do you need to isolate yourself but then it actually makes things worse because right. i mean because you, you're you, sinking deeper into that that darkness yes yeah and when you expose yourself to other people other things it can pull you out yeah slowly right but yeah you have to give it a chance yes you do and so, I mean, yeah, just, I remember now. Sorry, my head's in this, <laughs> I'm talking. I need to distract you. It's in itchy. this time <laughs> that I'm in right now, I realized that, okay, I did have progression because now I don't feel so unsafe as I did before. I do have that time mm -hmm. from time to time, sometimes feeling unsafe. But um, I think the only time I feel unsafe is with my health. That's the only time I freak out, but other things I'm not worried about as mm -hmm. before I would be worried. Uh, oh my God. I would just not feel safe at all. Like I just felt like everything. Oh, I don't know. Um, what's going to happen to me? You know, am I going to be homeless? Am I going to, you know, just so any little type of worry? Yes. Like whatever there is to worry about, you would turn it into like and, full blown anxiety and paranoia. I'd, I'd have uh -huh. paranoia. Okay. And sometimes I do have paranoia, but it's not as much as it was before. And that comes from the PTSD. You know, I, I was highly, highly paranoid before um, for a long time. Mm -hmm. Paranoid and um, and nobody knew, you know, like mm -hmm. talking about other people. Right, not, right. Nobody, people, you knew, obviously. Yeah, but people, other people yeah, like, around you. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. just pretending I'm okay. But uh, it was really hard because... Um, yeah, just how, for how many years feeling unsafe? Yeah. I mean, the times, of course, before when I was living with my mom, like under 23, mm -hmm. I was 
okay, I wasn't feeling unsafe, mm -hmm. even though I did have struggles because my mom was sick. Mm -hmm. But the emotional bond that I had with my mom, we had a good relationship because, you know, she was just really loving towards me. Yeah. But, um, but I didn't start feeling that unsafe like feeling until after 23 that's when and I, I think no it hit me more after my mom died that's what i was gonna say because she was very much an anchor for you yeah she was my anchor so, even so after she died living near each yeah, other i still felt, still felt yeah some sort of but safety. no i should say after my mom died mm -hmm. then that's when i felt like i died too mm. and then that's when everything really rose up the anxiety the depression mm-hmm um, and then I just became an, I was just zombie, like a, yeah, I was like a zombie. Yeah. So what, what did that look like clinically? Like, did you go to seek help from like medical professionals? Um, so not at that time, mm -hmm. um, later on many years later than I did, but during that time I didn't, I just went to the doctor because I was getting sick all the time. And the doctor mm. realized she noticed that I have anxiety and all that. And so she just, of course, prescribed medication, which of course didn't help, but didn't help me, but everybody's mm -hmm. different. Some people need it, but right. I'm not speaking for anybody. So yeah. that's just for me. Right. Cause I don't want anybody saying it, but yeah, no, it works yeah. for some people. Yeah. But yeah. I'm only talking for myself. Right. So, um, it didn't work for me. And, um, and also cause of the environment I was in, but yeah, I totally felt alone cause I couldn't turn to anyone mm -hmm. at that time. And we were out of touch at that time. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah. we were like in touch, out of touch, in touch, yeah. out of touch. But that time for we were like out, years. Yeah. yeah, that was the time I didn't reach out to you yet because I didn't have Khadija. The time I had Khadija was when I reached out to you. Mm -hmm. And that was 2010. Mm -hmm. But before that, this was before 2010. So we weren't in touch. I Yeah, we were in touch on and off yeah. before that. Yeah. Because I've seen all your kids as babies. Yeah. So it was just always, because yeah. you're always moving. There was a couple years. Yeah, you're always yeah. moving. It was yeah. hard, you know. Exactly. And then I lost the numbers and all that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I, I was just in this period of where during that time I had to just numb myself, you know, but I knew something was wrong with me and I didn't know what it was. You know, and I was just like, am I bipolar? Am I, yeah. <laughs> I don't know what was going on yeah. with me until many years later, um, I finally got diagnosed with chronic PTSD. That's what my therapist told me. She was like, you were, you have chronic PTSD. And I'm like, oh, now I have an answer. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, just okay. getting that, you feel relief. Yeah, because oh, I'm right? like, now I know what's to, going on. Yeah. Now I know what to work on. Right. Whereas right. before I didn't know, right. I'm like, I knew I was depressed and I knew I had some type of weird anxiety, mm -hmm. but I couldn't, you know, and I was just like, do I have bipolar disorder? Do I have this? Couldn't figure it out. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah. And so it was just that time it was very lonely, but then until I went for therapy, um, and even my therapist, she was like, she's like, yeah, you, we would benefit from somatic therapy, you know, but, um, of course, you know, I couldn't afford it at that time, yeah. you know, um, till now I can't, but you know, no, I mean, it, it makes sense. Cause the mind and the body, they work together. Yes. yes. They work together. Yeah. But, um, I, I just, yeah, there was just many stages, but so now, um, I don't know, like which stage to talk about, but the anxiety that I have right now is mostly like health anxiety. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But and, working through, let's like, if, you know, if we can focus a mm -hmm. little bit on how you work through okay. PTSD, mm -hmm. anxiety, okay. um, because it's like, wow, what does that what does that look like? Like, how do you begin to tackle that? <laughs> because that's the thing that kind of like brought you down. You know, it kind of took you out. It did. Right? So it's like, how do you build yourself back up from that? It's, especially if you're not, you know, taking medication. So I'm not doing anything. I refuse to numb myself. Mm -hmm. um, but that's why it's just like, you really have to nurture yourself and the reparenting yourself comes in mm -hmm. and takes place because nobody can do this for you. The reparenting that sorry to interject, but I just feel like I want to add that. 
as great as your parents were to you, mm -hmm. and you always say it, mm -hmm. you still need reparenting. Yes. Yes. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Because, you know, I don't have my dad here or my mom. I'm, well, my mom's passed away, mm -hmm. but my dad lives far away, so I don't, I have to take care of myself yeah. because I have my yeah. kids. Which means... We always need some sort of parental figure in our lives, mm -hmm. no matter how old we are. Mm -hmm. exactly. And that is okay. Like yes. that is normal. It is. It you is. Know? And that's why, you know, it's like people always say like, God, the father, it's like, mm -hmm. it is, you know, mm -hmm. we are still children mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. <laughs> ourselves, even as adults yes. who need yeah. parenting. Yeah. So right. the, the reparenting of ourselves is like, forever right right it is it is and you know also going through knowing when I had PTSD I mm -hmm. had to work on reprogramming my brain you know uh, meaning so that's shifting that thought patterns begin. breaking that cycle right and healing from this a lot of things generational trauma mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. um what else? Um, I had to, I mainly was working on thought patterns mm -hmm. and then, you know, um, in the, that was in the beginning, working on thought patterns later on down the road came the changing of the diet and exercising. Cause for a long time I did not exercise. I wasn't doing any of those things, <laughs> but everything came at its right time, mm -hmm. you know, cause it's just like an onion when the layers, yeah. you know, everything was layered up. So each layer would reveal itself at the right time. Whatever right. I needed to work on at that time was what was meant to be worked on. Mm -hmm. So, you know, in the beginning, the, uh, the thought patterns, trying to um, change the voices, you know, in my head, mm -hmm. you know, um, from those negative voices, those dark ones where, you know, self-abuse. I did a lot of self-abuse to myself with my words. Yeah, know? that's like... That's really, I think, important to say. Yeah. Because I think a lot of people do abuse themselves with words and mm -hmm. they don't even like it doesn't even give them pause right you know like they will attack themselves verbally yeah and then just brush it off yeah. like oh that's just the way i think about myself when yeah. it's like you're abusing yourself right and right. Then that's why you get sick because exactly. you're telling the cells in your body to attack you mm -hmm. and then that's what it does mm -hmm. it will attack you you're you're commanding your body <laughs> to exactly. attack yourself <laughs> Yeah, exactly. It's just like how if you put bad food in your body, yeah. then you're going to get sick, you know, yeah. whatever it may be. Um, so, yeah, and that's what I was doing my, to myself. I was in self-destruction mode and not mm. realizing it. Mm -hmm. And then when I did realize, then I was just like, and I was still in the beginning when I was working on it, I still had that pattern, obviously, because I just started working on it. So right. it takes time. But now I don't abuse myself as much. Like I, my biggest thing would be like, oh, I'm a loser. I'm such a loser. You know, um, that's what I would say to myself all the time. Or, oh, yes, I'm meant to suffer. You know, um, I'm just meant to suffer. Uh -huh. Nothing, nothing good can come out. It's so life. hard to hear. Yeah. As someone who cares about you, it's hard for me to hear that. <laughs> but, you know, no, it's, you know, it's part of your journey, part of your story. I'm not making this yeah, about me. Right. I'm just like, you know, yeah. just connecting with you mm -hmm. and, you know, trying to understand. Yeah. But, you know, thank God I, I don't think like that anymore. But it took time. That took a couple of years for me to get away from that type of thinking. Right. You know, um, just self torture, basically. I was yeah. I just would, Did your therapist help you? Yeah. Get out of that mindset and help retrain your brain to, you know, to not continue to traumatize yourself. Basically, she was because that's to what's weird, out. right? Uh -huh. It's like when the person when when you have people in your life who are traumatizing you and you get rid of those people you know the toxic people mm -hmm. they're gone but you're still traumatizing yourself yes. even when they're gone right you're right. continuing that that pattern mm -hmm. which i don't know if that's what you meant by generational trauma i have no idea mm -hmm. like you just kind of touched on it and kept going yeah but you know i just 
but yeah, generational trauma does like affect an, you too. Yeah. You know, so that, that also can be an issue for others, you know, cause some people don't, they won't get abused by their parents or something like that. But then like there's things that they're doing and they're like, why am I doing this? And it's like something that came from their, you know, ancestors. Yeah. That, yeah, grandfather, that, that right? happened right. within their it's, lineage. That's like the, um, the easiest way to explain it, I think, is there's, like, an energy of familiarity mm -hmm. in it. Mm -hmm. And that's what, like, will attract you to put yourself in that situation. Mm -hmm. Right. Because it feels familiar. Right. But you don't know why. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's not good. Right. Like, for me, things, like, my parents, they weren't abusive towards me, but... But there, there was things from things, their past. Yeah. Their experiences that, that they're emitting. Me. Yeah. That even if they're and, not saying And I didn't it. know why I was attracted to, you know, and even my mom would tell me to stay away from certain things, you know, like mm -hmm. tell me what type of person to be with, you know, just life um, lessons. Right. Um, right. But she still, even if she told you to stay away from things, mm -hmm. and we may cut this part out but I know that her behavior would show you one thing sometimes and then her voice would say another yes, yes. so it's also that unspoken action that she's taking but you're learning from that because you're a teenager right. and you're young and you're seeing it yeah. and you're seeing that she's being self-destructive right. in a certain way and you're receiving two different messages. Right, right. Right. And that, that's a good thing to bring up because I've, I wanted to talk about that. Okay. Um, because that leads to, that was one of the things that led to my anxiety that I didn't face until now when I had spoken about it with you mm -hmm. and her, you know, boyfriend at that time. Um, you know, so in my teenage years, I just let everybody know. Um, so my mom had her boyfriend who just violated me and you know I don't know like exactly what had happened but you know she woke me up one morning and tells me oh I threw him out because I don't want to say his name or anything mm -hmm. but um yeah she she's told me she threw him out because he was in the bed with me and at that time I was, I don't know how old, I don't know if I was 19 or, I don't remember how old, do you remember? Was it I when I was 18? I think you were 18. Okay. I think you yeah, were 18. Yeah, 18. I was, because I came home, I was... 18 or younger. Past, You're definitely not 19. You no, were no, 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 I think I was 18. 18. Yeah, yeah, I wasn't in high school. That I remember I wasn't in high school at the time, so I, mm -hmm. I, I think I was 18, but I know I was under 20. And um, so he, I, I came home that night, I was passed out drunk so I didn't know what happened until she woke me up the next morning and she's mm -hmm. like he was in your bed so I threw him out and I'm like in shock mm -hmm. like what what I, confused and like feeling like oh my god what could he have done while I was you know knocked out. yeah right. knocked out yeah. and 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 so I just completely felt violated and I was just you know and so yeah she was in relationships that were not good for her Mm -hmm. and that was due or to for you yeah or for you yeah because there were signs even before that happened mm -hmm. yeah right yeah yeah and 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 so when that's when I didn't feel safe because yeah. later yeah. on down the road she took him back right. and so that's when I was like well then I stayed at your place yeah you know yeah and I couldn't be at home because I didn't feel safe at home and nobody there was nobody to protect me. Right. I had nobody to protect me, you know, and my dad wasn't in my life at that mm -hmm. time. He was completely out of my life um, at that time. Um, so I had no father figure, um, nobody. Yeah. I didn't have my brother. My brother didn't, you know, so I just didn't have that safety. And so that's part yeah that was a part of me not oh, feeling yeah. safe yeah it's like you if know. you don't think that will give you anxiety <laughs> it's just like uh, yeah no that will yeah because you don't know right just part of it is not knowing yeah is what gives you anxiety too yeah yeah so yeah, yeah i mean so from there on i was like <sighs> i just had to toughen up myself like 
be on survival mode. So I did a lot of drinking, you know, um, just numbing myself at that time because I didn't, you know, know what else to do. Yeah, because I was so young and I didn't know about, especially in the 90s, we didn't know anything about like anxiety and like we didn't. No, know how didn't. it is yeah we no, didn't have we knowledge didn't. of we that we weren't paying attention to those yeah. things back and it then. wasn't spoken about back then yeah it, it wasn't no. like mental health was like not really focused no upon not at all <laughs> at not all. all therapy wasn't talked about nothing yeah. so yeah so that's where i realized when i had that conversation with you about why do i feel so um numb and unsafe mm -hmm. why am i having anxiety right those were one of those those were the one of the roots right one of the roots right and i had to face that yeah you did and i didn't i buried that you did for you many did. years i buried it it was hard for me to even bring it up yeah <laughs> to you but like, i was, I was ready. afraid to bring it up yeah. to you i was like oh i think she needs to look at this and, yeah but should i say it you know because i didn't know how you were going to react mm -hmm. you know but um yeah. Yeah, but you, it was, it's weird because it's like we both knew it was time mm -hmm. for you to look yeah. at it. Yeah, yeah. You know? So we're like, okay, let's look at this. But anyway. <laughs> Are you going to cry? Oh. <laughs> but it's okay. No, it's good. It's good because that's just part of healing, you know? Like, yeah. I, you know, me facing that I, and that this tear or whatever, it's, it's a good one. It's, it's a happy, like, because I faced that, I faced that, that root that I was trying to find, like, you know, when you're trying to pinpoint the root of the problem mm -hmm. and, um, it made me feel free and it was empowering to find, to face that. Right. Right. You know? Instead of um, burying it, right, and not speaking about it, right. And what's what I found interesting is because you dealt with that mm -hmm. that particular thing, everything else that you were burying during that time in your life ended up coming up. Yes, exactly. Because you were willing to focus on that one piece that was holding everything down. Yeah. So then I chose destructive so, relationships. Yeah. 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 And, you know, because I, I buried that. So it was rising up in different ways through my behaviors, through my actions, mm -hmm. you know, through relationships I was having. So, you know, um, but once you face it, you know, and you take the time to process, then that's when you can start managing the anxiety and you can start healing, you know from where, whatever it is, you know, once you find that root, you know, then that's the beginning. That's the opening. Right. Of healing. Right. And as I like to say, our aha moments, you know, aha. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You had, you said earlier, like they feel like these epiphanies, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. And sometimes you don't know where they come from mm -hmm. or how come they pop up. Where you're just like, oh, oh, I just had an aha or whatever. And I feel like for you and I, we are in a constant state of seeking mm -hmm. and in a constant state of, well, growth or expansion. Yeah. Because we're just, we're so hungry for it all the time yeah. that they, they just keep coming to us and they build on top of each other. Like one aha leads to another one mm -hmm. and then that one leads to another one. Mm -hmm. And then our minds are like blown. Like, mm -hmm. right. we're like, wow, that mm -hmm. was amazing. Yes. Wow. Like we get used to these, these miracles happening to us mm -hmm. in like, you know, you know, in like, at like 12 p.m. on a Thursday. You know what I mean? Right. <laughs> like they're like these little mini miracles because we're open to them because mm -hmm. other people would ask like, oh, how come I don't get those? Yeah. You have to but seek are it. you seeking it? Yeah. Are you open to receiving it? Yeah. And are you willing, like you're saying, to look at yourself to get to the root mm -hmm. of it? Yeah. Um, you have to be yeah. willing to look at, look and dive deep. Right. Because right. if you're not, you're not going to have that. You're not going to receive those aha moments. Yeah, because I, I think a lot of people wonder what it feels like. Mm -hmm. Because some people just don't have them. And I will tell you, it feels good. It does. <laughs> it feels really good. It's hard to really explain. Feel... It's such a personal feeling. Yeah. I mean, for me, it made me feel empowered. It, it yes, felt like it's empowering. I felt free. 
I was, yeah. I, I, I got like the, like it felt like the shackles were gone. Yeah. I broke off the shackles, you know, because what I was doing, I wasn't freeing myself because I was burying everything and not facing that pain and not processing it, mm -hmm. you know, you know, just for the example of like, just the certain relationships that I never didn't think about were toxic. And then I was like, Oh, this is toxic, oh, it was. you know? Right. And right. Yeah. And so I never faced it. And I was like, wow, this is why I've been carrying this heavy weight. Yeah. Like, and I couldn't realize, you know, figure out what it was until so yeah. yeah but you have to dive deep and it is work and you have to be patient with yourself yeah you have to be really patient with yourself i did have a question about um when you're in the like the depth of anxiety mm -hmm. like in the thick of it you know where you're like borderline panic attack you know mm -hmm. and you're you're trying to like self-regulate you know breathe and calm down and catch your breath and not focus on your heart that feels like it's about to you know pound out of your chest mm -hmm. it's like i feel like you don't look for the root when you're in that space mm -hmm. is that the truth is that true like wait until you feel calm and regulated then do the work and look for yes, your root definitely because like, you i feel yeah. like some people will think uh-huh you know just from not knowing yes they think oh i'm having anxiety attack i need to find the root where's the root where's it's like yeah, no, that's no, not no. the time that's like there's the time. a time and a place for everything yes exactly. that's not the time you go within right <laughs> and look for the root because right. you're gonna poke a bear it is what's gonna yes, happen when yes, you're doing that yeah. you're gonna feel worse you're not gonna and you're not moment, gonna get through that anxiety attack exactly in the moment of having a panic attack whatever it may be like in the thick of it you have to just ground yourself in that moment you know and you know pay when when you're in the thick of it you have to pay attention to your surroundings find something that will soothe you in that moment you know whether you know putting cold water on your face, you know, those are just the things for in that moment when you're in the thick of it, you know, with the panic attack or whatever it may be, anxiety attack, um, or go outside and, and breathe, you know, because when I would have my panic attacks, because literally I would think in that moment, mm -hmm. I would seriously think that I was dying because there was one time when I did have my first panic attack, um, which many people do, they go to the ER. Because you're hyperventilating, right? Yes, and I thought I was having a heart attack. Heart attack, I didn't right. know because it was my first time having a panic yeah. attack. I think I've only had two in my life. Mm, yeah, I think. I've had many. So, but my very first one, I didn't know what that was mm -hmm. until I went to, you know, the the er and mm. they're just like oh that was just a panic attack and i was like oh so that's what it is because i was just like i my blood pressure was going up and yeah just everything went crazy and so yeah I, you go numb yeah right yeah. like <laughs> there's just it, it, it's scary yeah it's a scary it, feeling it is scary um is scary. and but then when it started happening again i knew those were panic attacks so i was just like why is my body acting up like mm -hmm. why am i getting these panic attacks right when my situation, my environment's not, you know, I would, when you're out, when you're in an environment that's not giving you a reason, a reason, and then you're confused because you're just like, <laughs> shouldn't I be feeling at peace? Right. But then I didn't realize later, like, oh, it's because my body's trying to regulate because it's not, it's still not used to, it's not, it doesn't know what peace is. It's used to chaos. Yeah. You know, so yeah. you have to get your body used to peace you know um, yeah because your body might resist it right at first mm -hmm. yeah right even if your body doesn't act up your mind that's true will act up right so you know how we talked about in our discussions before with um how i would tell you why am i thinking this way or like i'm still getting these chaotic thoughts and then we realize oh because we're just not used to being in the state of peace, peace. right so that's how anxiety is like you know that 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 attachment to that chaotic thought yeah. or chaos is or just and fear fear yeah. is a chaotic feeling yeah. you know fear is comfortable for some people too. yes right right yeah because they'll stay in a certain situation which is not good for them because of their fear right you know 
So, yeah. But I mean, everybody has different symptoms of anxiety and, you know, but there's just no, you can heal. You can. It feels for some people, a lot of people out there that think they can't, you know, they feel hopeless. There's always hope. You know, yeah, there is always hope. There is always hope, no matter what. Even if you can't, like I, I, I couldn't get like the therapy that that I was talking about. Like that would be good for me, you know, mm -hmm. like somatic therapy. But I did have but you found other ways. Yeah, I, I had regular therapy, but that wasn't that that type of therapy didn't really help for extreme anxiety. You know, um, it was just a place. It was good for me in the in the way that my therapist was really good at holding space for me. Mm -hmm. That was the outlet that I had. But the only reason why I was able to afford that therapy was because I didn't have to pay for it. Mm -hmm. So it was like I was sponsored. Yeah. But so. It's just great. Yeah. I, it was just from God, you know, mm -hmm. and, but if you're in a situation where you can't get therapy, believe me, you know, there's always a way there's always you know, Definitely. because I was only limited to, I, I don't go for therapy anymore because there was a limit, mm -hmm. you know, because I, I was being sponsored. So they only limit you, you know, right. so I had to do the rest of the work on my own. And if, you know, if I could do it, you know, yeah, anyone, I mean, you've done the work on your own. We, or we I do have. it together. Yeah, we do it together I mean, because you, we don't judge each other. Mm hmm. And that's really important when you have someone else holding space for you mm -hmm. is you just have to be as like honest mm -hmm. and, and just good natured as you can, mm -hmm. because it's like, I know you've held, held space for me where I was just like angry and neurotic and saying all kinds of like nonsensical things, but you don't hold that against me like mm -hmm. the next day. Mm -hmm or whatever you don't even hold on to it mm -hmm. like at all mm -hmm. you know and it's not that i needed a sounding board so i think it's just you happen to know what i need in that moment mm -hmm. yeah right mm -hmm. and it's just like i mean i'm i know i'm lucky to have someone like you in my life <laughs> like it's not that easy to just just you know call someone up and be like oh hey i i'm ha i feel this and mm -hmm. I, I need to get this off of my chest and sometimes it's like you have to be selective about who you can trust yes and who you can pour your heart out to and they will not judge you and that's like the most important thing because once you feel judged you're gonna hold back yes you know your your, your ego is gonna take over because it's gonna start to feel judged right and start to like taint your healing process yeah and so um yeah i'm very fortunate i have numerous people that i can go to you know and i know i'm lucky because for some people it's hard to just find one mm-hmm Yes, exactly. It is. And, you know, I, I'm the same. I feel lucky that I had you, mm -hmm. you know, that I have you. Um, and so if you could just find one person, you know, or me, you could, <laughs> I could be that person to <laughs> hold space for you. Um, but just, you know, there's, you make your intentions that, you know, I, I really want to heal myself and I know I can heal just from there, you know. Um, That's where you start. Yeah. Because a lot of people don't know where to start. Right. That's a great place to start yeah. is with that intention. And in the itself. doors will open because with intentions, the doors open up with intentions, good intentions, always make good intentions. And like for me, um, it was that, you know, those intentions that I really wanted to heal. And then also with with my spirituality of being Muslim, like, you know, just turning to God and asking God for help, you know, just putting God first and knowing and trusting, having trust in God that, okay, he will guide me, you know, just pouring out my soul, you know, that was just something for me because of where I'm at or who I am, my identity. Right. Right. Um, yeah. So those things are really, those were beneficial for me. Um, just the trust, you know, um, you really can, I just don't give up really. Um, yeah, I agree with all of that because, uh, I think some people, they say, Oh, well, I, I, I don't get guidance. 
I don't get this or I don't see signs or whatever. I feel like there's always signs mm -hmm. there is. <laughs> and there's always guidance. It's how you're choosing to see it. Yes. Um, <laughs> that's just my opinion. Yeah, yeah. That's just my opinion yeah. because uh, people tend to think that a miracle has to look like some sort of ginormous mm. life banging yeah. gesture yeah. like it shows up in the movies mm -hmm, you know yeah. where it's like this bright light is just gonna shine upon you and you're gonna feel god's presence or you know mm -hmm. you're gonna win the lotto or it's like it's like <laughs> the signs that's great if it does show up for you like that i'm not yeah, saying yeah. it's not possible mm -hmm. but most of the time it's simple yes it's so simple it is such as a video will show up it Yes. In my feed on your on YouTube. YouTube feed. Yes. That all the time. Or a random person I'll run into will say something. Yes. And I'll catch their message. You know, anything. But it's, you have to believe yes. it. Yes. Without a doubt. Mm -hmm. Because I notice that a lot of people will say, oh, that was this weird coincidence. And then they'll let it go because mm -hmm. they don't think they're worthy of a miracle. Right. For some strange that's reason. True. Yep. Yep. That's true. Yeah. No. It, we're always, you know, being we're guided. We're all worthy. Yeah. It's just, <laughs> you know, we just have to keep our eyes open and be present. And, you know, in order to get through the anxiety, you just, again, that you have to connect to yourself. Because right. anxiety is a disconnection. It's a disconnection to yourself. Trauma is a disconnection to yourself. So we have to get back within ourselves and connect to ourselves, make a relationship with ourselves and work on every area of our life, you know, to make it, you know, to be aligned and, and balanced. Um, it's really important um, because also the other factor of helping, you know, you heal from anxiety is regulating that nervous system. You know, right, and that's really right. important because that's what will you'll feel grounded. And when you're grounded, then you know those attacks won't come up so much um, because your nervous system will be more regulated. Yeah, yeah. I have um, I have one last question. Mm -hmm. I'm curious about the correlation between anxiety and self love. <laughs> Yes, that's a good one. Um, yeah, self-love is very important. Now I'm talking about a healthy self-love, not arrogant, not, not all into me, myself and I. The self-love that you want good things for yourself, not lowly things. You honor yourself. You have boundaries, you know. Um, what do you mean lowly things? Like you could pick bad relationships oh, okay, okay you know abusive gotcha. or okay, okay. you know um things that will create anxiety for you okay you know when you don't have self-love or you create anxiety within yourself with your thoughts because you don't have self-love right you know right. like like for me i created anxiety within myself by all that abusive talk that i had you know you're gonna suffer you're gonna die you're gonna die anytime <laughs> I was thinking like you know just crazy things just I would just have the worst thoughts ever you know about myself and terrorize myself because there was no love no that I had yeah so it's like love I yourself did not enough honor to not, myself yeah you know I would let to not dishonor yourself exactly I would let somebody put me down you know and put myself in situations where I would just let people do that you know, right. I didn't honor myself. And I was just like, you know, thinking about that back then, I was just like, you know, God wouldn't want me to not like honor myself. Yeah. Like, I, I have to have some dignity. Exactly. I didn't have dignity, mm. you know, and I didn't have self-respect. It's a huge word. Yeah. Dignity and self-respect. Right. Yeah. So... Those are the things that self-love is huge. And if we can have that develop 
a healthy, you know, self-love, like where we have dignity and respect for ourselves and we accept ourselves and we don't care what people think as long as we're not hurting people. But like we don't seek people's approval, you know, mm -hmm. um, for me, I, I tell myself only I'm here to please God and that's it. I'm not here to please anyone you know, just, just God. But of course, you know, pleasing God doesn't mean I'm going to hurt people because I'm trying to do what pleases God. Right. So, you know, I just focus on that and, you know, I just let myself know all the time. And this is something I ha you have to constantly remind yourself of mm -hmm. that, you know, I'm not here to, to look or to even care for people. What, I mean, for their approval and not to care about what they think. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So, I love it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I just felt like I had to ask that question because I feel like a lot of, I mean, not that I'm like pinpointing anyone or mm -hmm. whatever, but I just feel like it seems to be like this common thread amongst people that I know who have anxiety or there are yeah. certain areas of their life where they feel like they're not good enough mm -hmm. or they feel like, you know, they're lacking in some way or they're, yes. they don't, it, they don't accept themselves in a certain way, which to me, you know, alludes to the fact that you're not loving yourself right in that particular area. And that's what, what prompted the question mm -hmm. because you're worrying about, <laughs> you're worrying about something that you don't have to worry about. Exactly. If you, if you filled that space with love for yourself yes. and it, that, that takes trust for some reason they don't trust themselves to love themselves in that area right and you know of course that that's a whole nother like yeah hour and a half of unpacking right. that but right it was just i was just kind of like looking for confirmation yes. or validation yes. like am i kind of thinking the same thing mm -hmm. like is there something there that'll be but, one of our other topics <laughs> self-love <laughs> <laughs> yeah well thank you for answering the yes. question but anyway is there anything else you wanted to add as we um, hear about anxiety or any other no i can't think topics. of anything else of what to say or to add on about anxiety right now yeah um but if anybody has any questions or whatever please you know you can comment uh, leave questions um, in the comment section or um, if there's like something personal you want to ask um, we have it, the email yeah, we, have, we have the email it's on the, uh, the YouTube the, page the in the about yeah. section or, okay. or like you know we have Instagram yeah so DM. Coco and Tell yeah DM yeah. us at um, Coco and Tell the link is uh, down below in the comments yep yeah so yeah I guess that's it that's all. So until next time. Okay.